Doctor, I'm so scared. I've got another week to wait before I get my biopsy results. Tell me a bit more. Obviously, I haven't met you before, so tell me um, what's been going on. Right, I went for a routine mammogram, mm -hmm. uh, just so normal, same as before. Got called back, so I wasn't really, really worried. But when I actually saw the radiologist, she said she needed to do some more tests because I'd got this suspicious lump. Um, and they did this biopsy while I was there. And I've still got another week from today before I get the results. That must be really difficult and stressful for you. Um, I'm finding it quite difficult to, to sort of cope with every day at mm. the moment. I can understand that. Do you mind if I just ask you a bit more about um, yeah. what's happening? Mm. Um, so you, you just said to me that you went for a routine mammogram. Yeah, I got called and went along, had, okay. it, had this mammogram. Is that the first one you've No, you've I've had, had uh, another one. But this will be my second. Okay, and was the last one normal? Yeah, it was fine, no okay. problem. And had you noticed any problems with No, the this is why it's, it, it's really been a bit of a shock. Okay. And is there anyone in your family that's ever suffered with breast cancer? No, breast no, my mum didn't have it. Okay. So I can understand if you weren't expecting there to be a problem. Yes, yeah, it's, a, it's a bit of a smack in the face, actually. Okay. I've got smacked at the moment. And so you said that they did a biopsy. Yeah. And have they made some follow-up arrangements? Yeah, I'm you? going back next week. Okay. Um, so you've got the appointment all yeah, sorted? Yes. Okay. But I, I, I just... All I can think of is that it's going to be positive and am I going to have to have my breast off, are the lymph nodes involved, <sighs> what's going to happen, you know, my children, well my children are growing up but it's still my children, I, I, I just, I, I can't sleep, I can't eat, I, I'm, I'm bursting into tears for the, the least little thing, I, I just, I just don't know what to do, I thought I'd better come and see you. Okay, well just before we talk a bit more, what, what were you hoping that I could do for you today? Is there something in particular? Um, I don't really know. I mean, I've never been in this situation before. I don't know whether this is something that happens to a lot of people and that, that when I go back they're going to say, no, it was fine. Um, are they going to tell me, yes, I have got cancer? Will they then tell me what they will do on that day or will I have to go back again and wait again? Mm -hmm. um, will they put me in for surgery? Will it be radiotherapy, chemotherapy? Will my hair fall out? I just... I just there's so much... I can see that. There's a lot going just, in your... I just don't know what I just think anymore. Well, listen, let, let's take one thing at a time. I think there's lots of unanswered things yeah. going on in your mind and I think it's probably not worth you thinking about what could be right. until we get some straight answers. I don't know if you you know what the what this the screen we call it screening program the same as when we do smear tests and other sorts of things because what we're looking to do is to try and pick up early cancers and treat them before they get right. too much of a problem. Um, and there's been a lot of controversy in the last couple of years. I don't know if you've read much about it in no, the papers. Really, no. The problem with screening like this and routinely checking everyone with a mammogram is that a lot of the times we find things on the mammogram that when we further investigate it they turn out to be nothing. All oh, right. Okay. So this this could be it could be something false. It's just showing up something That's right. Else. That's right. And you know there are many stories of women that have had positive mammograms and it's gone on to be nothing. I can't give you an exact number, though I can definitely find out for you if that would help you. Mm. But it is safe to say that there are a considerable amount of people who are going through the same as you and will go and have positive news. So that's, that's the first thing to say. So, so there's, there's a chance that this couldn't be cancer? That's right. There is a chance that this can, might not be cancer. The second thing to say is that, as I said before, the point of this screening program is to pick up early cancers. And it might be that you have one of these early cancers. And the problem with these is that, you know, if we never found out about it, you might live to a ripe old age at age 90 um, with this cancer and have no problems for, from it. So it's not to say that there's going to be lots of consequences because of it and that you're going to, you know, all these bad things are going to happen. Right. Because some of these early cancers, we actually don't know 
if they are going to be a problem in your lifetime. So that's the next thing to say. Um, the other thing I probably should say to you is that you know, there's been loads of advances made with breast cancer um, and there's lots of things that we can do and every year that goes by women are living longer and longer with breast cancer. I know but it's so frightening not knowing oh. if there's things growing inside me or not or, I know. or there's nothing wrong with it at all. And, um, but I think that until we have a proper answer you should try, I know it's easier said than done, not to think too much pass next oh, week. How, how can I, you know, how can I try and do that? I mean... Well, who have you got at home with you? Um, my husband and my two sons. And how are they taking the news off? Uh, they've been very supportive. I don't think they're actually even thinking that it could be something like cancer. I think they're thinking that, well, whatever will happen, we'll deal with it when I get the results. But That's I a can't, good attitude. It is, but I can't get this out of my head. Mm. So they've been quite positive about mm. it. Mm. And have anyone in your family ever been through something like that? No, before? no, nothing at all. No, okay. And your husband and your children are very supportive? Very, very, yes. Okay. And you say that you're the person that's been affected and you're not thinking positively about it. How You said your sleeping has become quite I said, bad. I sort of drop off and then I wake up in a start and start things going through my head and then I burst into tears again and... I've just got no appetite at the moment. I'm picking at things, but um, it, it's just very difficult when when you're awake. When you're awake and it's very quiet, to actually not think of anything in your head, you sure. know. And are you working at the moment? Yes, or? I am. What yeah. do you do for it? I'm a PA for a local um, solicitor. Okay, and is that keeping you busy, or you? It is, but I've had to have today off because I've I've just found it too much. I, 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 all I did yesterday was burst into tears at work, which isn't very good, it's not business-like. So I've asked for today off so that I could come to see you to see if you could help me to sort of get a little bit of normality back in okay. for the next week. And have they been quite supportive at They've work? They've been very, very good, very good. Okay. So, how do you think we can get you through the next week? I mean, it's been nice to talk to somebody other than to tell my husband my children how I feel. I don't want to upset them anymore. I understand that. Um, but just talking to you has helped. Okay. Um, I know you've said to me that even though this thing is there, it may not be anything to worry about. It could be a positive, a negative, false positive. False, false, false positive. Um, so that was that. You know, that's a little bit reassuring. But it would be nice to know. Roughly what percentage sure. of mammograms are actually a false positive? Well, I can definitely find that out for you. Well, that would be nice. Thank you. Okay. Um, so it's good that you said that talking to someone outside the family has, has helped mm. you. Is there anyone else outside the family that you feel you can talk to? I could probably speak to one of my best friends. Um, she's very, very good. She'd probably reassure me that, you know, you're running away with what you think it could be. Wait and see. Um, it's just that I, I don't want to, uh, you know, put too much burden on my children and my husband because I, I know they're probably going through the same thing. While that's I mean. it. That's it. Well, there's there's definitely support organisations that could support you, um, even over the phone at the moment. Really? Um, there are cancer organisations that would definitely be happy to speak to you. Oh, that might be nice. And I can, while I find out the figures for you, I could probably get you some phone numbers, and they'd probably be m even more reassuring than I can and give you. Um, proper statistics and everything. Oh, that, that would be That'd good be actually helpful. because then if I've got an afternoon where I feel I'm not coping very well I could perhaps ring somebody. That's right and have they given the, you the number of the breast care nurse at all at the hospital? No they haven't. They haven't so yet. When I go back next week, um, I think it's next Wednesday, okay. um, I think it's about 10 o'clock, they will go through everything with me and, good. and go through treatments and everything or as you say maybe a false positive that all this worry was for nothing. And is someone going to be coming with you? For yeah, my husband? husband's going with me. Great. Yes. Okay. Now, apart from talking to someone, have you had any thoughts about what you could do to distract yourself or take your mind off things in the next week? <sighs> no, I haven't actually. I mean, I've, my full focus has been this thing mm. in here and what's it going to do to me or what? Well, what do you normally like doing? Um, I do do yoga. I do read books. That sounds like a good plan to me. Mm, perhaps I should take a book to bed with me and <laughs> that's right. I maybe read it if I wake up. I do fall asleep reading a book, so that might be 
And the yoga sounds like a good yeah, plan Yeah, perhaps as well. I could uh, actually do an extra class a week or something. Yeah, I think until, just... Keep... till next week anyway, I'll go yeah. to two instead of... or three instead of two. I mean, I think to keep yourself busy and try and do things like relaxing and taking your mind off things will help you stay focused, stay positive, oh. um, help with your sleeping and your eating. Oh. And as you said, you're trying to keep it together for everyone else at the moment. Um, maybe doing things as a family, going out for dinner, yeah. doing things that you might enjoy. Yeah, I've yeah. only got one weekend in between, so that's good. That's we'll try and do something at the weekend. Okay. Um, so maybe what we could do is make an appointment for you to come and see me following your hospital okay. appointment. Yeah. And then, regardless of what the outcome, we can talk through it a bit more. Um, and any questions that you might have, even if I can't answer them, I'll try and find out the answers for oh, you. That's lovely. Well, thank you very much. Oh, is there anything?